What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today, and in this video we are doing the 25th installment of Random Model Airports. Today we're going to be doing the Charleston International Airport. No suggestions were made for this airport, however, if you do have any new suggestions for new Random Model Airports, please leave them in the comments below. A couple of things that I do want to get into before we get started with this update. First things first, as you can tell, I am filming this on a different camera than usual. I'm using my new iPhone. It's the iPhone 13 with the green back on it, the green color. So yeah, I figured I would use my iPhone for the random model airports. Do keep in mind that I am not going to make a switch over to my phone as I'm still going to use my Sony AX53 for all my other content. I figured I'd give the iPhone a chance here since I just got it um, just to see how it holds up doing airport updates. So yeah, really excited to do this here. And hopefully the phone will handle much nicer than my camera here as it's much lighter, much smaller, and more compact space. So uh, should make the... Uh, it should make the viewing experience a little bit more enjoyable for you guys. So I got two new models in this update. That's why I wanted to uh, pick out an airport myself. In this case, I went with Charleston so I could feature two of my new models here in a convenient fashion. So I got Concourse A on the left and Concourse A, or B on the right, sorry. Starting off here at Gate Alpha 2, as I kind of get lower down here, sorry about that. Get Alpha 2, we have one of my new models in my collection, the Breeze Airways Embraer 195. Super excited to have this model in my collection, and this will prove to be a really useful asset for all of my airports. Um, except Sioux Falls and Des Moines, as we don't get them just yet at, a, at either of those airports, and they've not been seen there yet, so hopefully that, uh, that's in the not-so-distant future. So this aircraft arrived in on a flight from Providence, Rhode Island, kind of an unusual flight, but that's how Breeze is. They like to operate to a lot of secondary markets. This arrived in at 7.20 p.m. right on time. So good impression for Breeze here in their first flight on airport updates on my channel. So really happy about that. At Gate Alpha 3, we have this Delta Connection CRJ900. This aircraft arrived in on a service from New York John F. Kennedy International, uh, flight 4644, at 10.04 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 10.12 a.m. arrival. At Gate Alpha 4, we have this Delta 737-800. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Atlanta, flight 824, at 4.14 p.m. ahead of a scheduled 4.41 p.m. arrival. Ironically, the aircraft that is being represented on this flight is November 3744 Foxtrot, which I was, which I believe is the one that Gemini Jets did back in 2008, um, their first Delta 738 release, or at least the one in the current Delta livery. I don't think they've done any 738s with the Delta flawed livery yet. Hopefully that's not too far out. At Gate Alpha 5, we have this Delta Connection Embraer 175 with these short winglets. Still waiting for an enhanced winglet release from Gemini. I'm not sure why we haven't gotten it just yet. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Boston Logan, flight 5596, at 11.44 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 11.52 a.m. arrival. I'm not entirely sure who operates this flight. That is everything we have here at the Alpha Concourse, just four aircraft out of the five gates. Move on to Concourse B, and this is where we are going to start off. Right here at Gate Bravo 1, we have this United 737-800 in the Continental Globe livery. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Denver, flight 537, at 3.21 p.m., a little bit behind a 3.10 p.m. scheduled arrival. Moving down to Gate Bravo 3, we have this United 737-700. The exact aircraft that is being represented in this airport update were the Continental Globe livery, but since I have the Evo Blue livery only, I am using that for this update. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Chicago O'Hare, flight 531, at 11.55 a.m., ahead of a scheduled 12.07 p.m. arrival. Uh, jump on over here a little bit. At Gate Bravo 7, we have the American Eagle Embraer 170 with the retro livery. This is a perfect representation here. I was really excited to see this on the flight board. Uh, all the flights in this airport update are from, if I can check here, Wednesday, April 13th. So really happy about uh, seeing this on the flight board. So I was very ecstatic to see this. So I could have both this and the Breeze in the same airport update. So, really excited to have this here. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Chicago Hair, flight 3931 at 11.53 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 11.56 a.m. arrival. Pop on back over here to gate Bravo 9. We have this American Eagle CRJ 700. This is the Skywest livery. I did pre-order the um, American Eagle CRJ 700 that was announced by Gemini Jets for their April 2022 releases, so I should be getting that in by May. 
This aircraft arrived in on a service from Dallas-Fort Worth International, flight 3269 at 3.30 p.m., a bit delayed from a 2.51 p.m. scheduled arrival. Sorry about some of the transitions here. I was hoping for it to be a bit more smooth, but my circumstance is that I got a big iPad in the background that I have to read off the flight information, so I have to shuffle that around a bit so I can uh, read that as I do the video. But up here at Gate Bravo 8, we have this JetBlue Airbus A320. This aircraft arrived in on a service from New York John F. Kennedy International, flight 2473, at 5.47 p.m., significantly delayed from a 4.15 p.m. scheduled arrival. I believe that is a hour and... I think that's a 42-minute delay. I think my math is correct on that. About an hour and 42 minutes. Or 32 minutes, actually. Hour 32. So, yeah. A bit of a significant delay for the folks on board this aircraft. So, hoping that they're able to continue uh, doing what they were supposed to be doing here in Charleston. Moving on over to Gate Bravo 6, we have this JetBlue Airbus A321 with the prism tail. Um, some JetBlue A321s have recently gotten the balloons tail, which is featured on some of their A321 Neos, so trying to spice up the variety a little bit, I guess, but it's going to make it a little bit confusing to identify aircraft just based off the tail. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Boston Logan, flight 2467, at 4.38 p.m. ahead of a scheduled 5.06 p.m. arrival. Moving over to Gate Bravo 4, we have the Southwest 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Baltimore, uh, flight 581 at 10.17 a.m. ahead of a scheduled 10.25 a.m. arrival. And to round out the airport update, at Gate Bravo 2, we have the Southwest 737-700 in the Hart livery with the blended winglets. This aircraft arrived in on a service from Dallas Love Field, flight 793, at 9.42 p.m., significantly delayed from a 7.25 p.m. scheduled arrival. And I'll do it here at Charleston International Airport. I'll zoom out here just a little bit so the camera quality, or microphone quality rather, will probably change, so I do apologize for that. So yeah. Really nice to give the iPhone a shot here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry about some of the cuts I had to make. Um, again, like I said, I have an iPad that I have to uh, flip around position so I can read off of that as I go through the updates. You can kind of see it there off to the right of your screen. Um, thankfully, there isn't anything significant on there that has not yet been done. Um, all the other stuff on there is from previous airport updates, so thankfully nothing's going to be leaked. But yeah. That's pretty much all I have for this airport update. Again, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the phone. If you guys did enjoy it, let me know, and I will continue to use my phone for the random model airport updates. Otherwise, my AX53 will continue to be used for all my other content. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.